Do you ever have the experience of wanting to paint from a photo but realizing there may be a problem there and so you hesitate and you don't do it? I mean, I have the same experience. This week I'm going to show you an image I've wanted to paint for years and I'll show you the problem, the solution I found, and then how I translated that into paint. Hi, Ian Roberts and Mastering Composition. So I take lots of reference photos for painting and none of them are perfect, but what I really look for is like the bones, good bones, good structure, good design, good masses of light and dark value masses, and I rely on that. But here's the image we're gonna look at this week. And I love it. I can't even tell you why I love it. I just have always liked it, but it needed something. And I'm gonna show you here what I mean. So I love this image, but you see it's kind of divided into three. There's the figure in the building, there's the fence, and then there's this road leading to nowhere. Now, we tend to want to go down here, but get stopped, and therefore tend to come back to the figure. So my thought was, if I open this up so that we can see out here, then we'll kind of move from one to two to three. That's my intention. And then here's the drawing. And you can see that there's this quality of, oh yeah, this is interesting. But you do get pulled down the fence and then out to the lake and the far shore. So that's the way I decided to paint it. So you see, by creating that space out into the lake, I'm solving for compositional problems first. I'm solving the structural problems first so that we have this sort of figure, fence, and road out into the lake as a really nice structure, but also at the same time, if we turn it sideways, just pulling us into the depth, way into distant space. So we're really creating a good illusion of depth. So now I'm gonna trans, I'll show you, I'm gonna translate that into the language of paint. This initial layer I just put on very quickly with Terps uh, and let it dry, just so that I had not white canvas there and then I fairly carefully drew in with uh, charcoal. And then here I'm starting to put in the lit piece that's going to be bringing us back into that corner of the painting, opening it up. And there's the far shore. I'm making those colors up, but you know, a pale blue like that, it doesn't have to be particularly accurate in order to sort of come across as somewhere a distant shore and the water's going to be the same thing. I mean, there's a lot of different colors you could use, but you just kind of put them in and they're going to work like that. And then the lit side and the dark side of the building. And again, it's just find the value, put it in. And as it turns out, well, you'll see later on that I darken some of the, some of the shadows just to kind of give it more substance. And then the shadow side of the grass. As you can see how cool, it's dark, but you can see how cool that green is compared to the sunlit side. And then a bush over on that side just to kind of give us the sense of the grasses coming in. But you see how I'm just putting these shapes in and it starts to sort of formulate the structure. And if a little bit shows through, I've got that uh, washed in color dry underneath to kind of help form it. Um, but you can see that where the sunshine is, it's a warm green and where, well, you'll see it as it comes together here, but you can see how warm that green is. Light, sure, but warm compared to the green shadow just above it. And then a road color, which I find, anyway, I get it a little bit too dark and then a little too red and I sort of wash it away again because I want that road taking us back there, but I don't want so much attention on it that we're kind of immediately jumping down the road. And the figure, you know, is smaller and you have to sort of adjust some of the shapes here. You can't be too laissez-faire about the way a figure looks, even though it's all in shadow and there's not really much happening there. But, you know, the figure's dressed in blue, so I'm putting the figure in blue. But you see how quickly you just kind of get a few shapes and it like, oh yeah, I see the hat and the scarf around the neck. And you sort of get the sense like, oh, there's a figure and you can kind of get away with it. And then I really like this fence. I just love this fence. And I like the way the sun is sort of the shadow, the light and the shadow down it. It's really kind of a beautiful structure as it goes back into shape. And I was wondering about those tall posts. And I'm having a feeling that maybe that's because to know where to plow in the winter. I'm not sure what those are for. 
But, you know, I certainly use them as verticals uh, of the structure in the painting. Uh, but you see, it's just sort of the lit side and the dark side drawn in. And the thing starts to sort of form as like, oh, I see, there's the fence. Uh, I mean, you got to get the drawing in. But I, would, I gridded the whole uh, canvas. It's 16 by 20. I gridded the whole canvas to make sure my drawing was accurate because, you know, you, you wouldn't need to make very many problem, very many mistakes on that fence before it would start looking kind of weird. And there's just flicking paint up in there to give the sense of tall grass. As it happens, well, there's putting a shadow under the, you know, the shadow side of that day. And then these are some of the uh, tall posts there. And then I put three, and you see how they're all sort of, that's the lit side, and then there's going to be a shadow bit, and then it comes back again. But you see how they're all kind of lined up there? So I get rid of one of them and then put it in again so that it's not all on the same angle looking like that. But there's the shadow side. You know, there's a shadow cast across that thing, and then I'm putting a little bit. I don't try to, I just go right over my tree trunks because I just want that fine thing, that single line to kind of read as a single line. And then I come back in with a little bit of paint just to kind of fill in those. And then it's pretty much blocked in and I'm going to stand back and spend some time with it. So there's the finished block in. And there's three things when I stand back and look at the painting that I start saying, okay, this is what I need to work on. I think the, side of the, sh the shadow side of the building needs to be darker to create more contrast. The whole foreground angle of grasses there, I think, needs to be simpler. And I think the road is too, well, it's too red to begin with, but it's, too, it's pulling too much attention. I think the fence should be doing the job of getting us back there, and having them both together is now pulling too much attention away from the figure. So those are three things that I work on when I start you know, once it's dry, then I just darken the building, uh, you know, pretty simple there. And then I just start simplifying all that foreground stuff, take away all those shadows across the road, which didn't really work anyway, and dull the road down. And so by doing those three, you know, I create a little bit more structure and form in the, in the foliage because that was just sort of put in pretty quickly. But, you know, those two, three things and, uh, you know, a little bit of work on the figure... And then there's the finished painting. And there's a really nice kind of warm quality to the sunlight and to the sunlight on the fence. And that little blue line at the back on the water just kind of pulls our attention all the way back there and gives this nice sense of moving across the picture plane back into the distance. So as always, I hope you found that helpful and engaging. I have had dozens of messages over the last six weeks or so of people asking me when Master in Composition will be available again, and I think it is finally available. Penguin Random House has reprinted it, and you can get it on Amazon, at least in the U.S. now and probably in Europe and other places fairly soon. Uh, maybe get it at a local bookstore if you got the chance, but it is available again. So listen, I hope you have a great week. I will see you again July 5th, a Tuesday. And until then, I hope you have an engaging and fulfilling month of creative expression. So all the very best and bye for now.